and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts, and I'm one of the co-founders of our service. And it's our great privilege on the afternoon of Tuesday, the 19th of March, 2024, to be talking to uh, Kanesh Gunabanga and uh, Georg Schmiel. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon, Stuart. Hi, great good afternoon. Good right. to be here. So, Example is based in uh, Kuala Lumpur, um, and very interesting uh, business proposition a platform that can organize influencer marketing to a range of brands, um, in mainly in um, um, Singapore and Malaysia and Taiwan, with potentially other geographies to follow. About uh, uh, 10 or $11 million a year in revenue in Aussie dollar terms, and, uh, and just reached break even point. So Ganesh, it's fair to say you've reached an interesting point in your growth. You've been able to grow this business to the point where, um, where it's actually profitable, and you're only just scratching the surface of the market opportunity. Yep, yep, it is. Our underlying business will be profitable, and we, but however, we're still investing in technology. And the reason why we're investing in technology really is to be able to kind of scale our market. We right now serve enterprise clients like KFC, McDonald's, um, Unilever, PNG in this region, but we want to kind of scale that as well to the huge SME market uh, in the region. There's actually more than a million SMEs in Malaysia alone, right? Uh, and, and so we want to kind of target that market, kind of roll out of technology and enable SMEs to also effectively use influencer marketing to promote their products and services. Right. Ganesh, this is going back a little while, but you floated one of the first uh, uh, internet companies in the whole of Southeast Asia uh, back in the day. So you're, you've are you been a big wheel in the, on the tech scene in Malaysia for a long time. Yeah, I floated the first uh, Southeast Asian internet company on the NASDAQ, actually. Right. So my um, company was an uh, online payment gateway called Money Online, and we're the first really Saudi internet company listed in the American markets. Right. And Gag, you've had a bit of track record of success as well. Uh, once upon a time, you were the CFO of uh, REA Group here in Australia. Right. You've since relocated to Southeast Asia, where you were pretty successful building one of the, the, the most successful uh, prop tech companies in Southeast Asia, which was then sold back to REA Group. Um, you've, you've run the, the, the hooker uh, organization in, in, in Asia. And in the meantime, you, you've showed up on the number of uh, ASX listed company boards. Tell us, um, uh, tell us what attracted you to invest in Example. Uh, what attracted me to invest in Example is, is a number of things. But first and foremost, that it's a technology platform. So all the businesses I have been involved in, iProperty, iCar and others, are technology platforms. It has a focus on the ASEAN and Australian New Zealand market, uh, which is also very, very important for me in terms of my investment thesis. And it is listed on the uh, ASX. It's a great team, has a great technology and has a massive potential ahead. Right. So, uh, uh, Ganesh, uh, we met a little while ago and you emphasised to me the importance of, uh, in the influencer market, there are, there are uh, really influential people. And then there are what you call nano and micro influencers, people with uh, somewhere between um, 1,000 and 100,000 uh, followers on whatever uh, platform they use. Why are yeah. those influencers so important in, in example? Sure. So basically, the nano and micro basically have a higher engagement rate. So the number of likes or the percentage of likes for that one to 100,000 is actually almost double, if not triple, the engagement rates of the bigger mega influencers, the Kim Kardashians of the world, so to speak, right? So, for example, mega influencers that have more than 1 million followers, the engagement rate of these influencers are only 1.7% versus a micro influencer, which is below 100,000 followers, that has a 4% engagement rate and below 10,000 is 8%. So, these smaller influencers have a lesser audience, but a higher engagement rate. And that's because we can really relate to them. Right. You've brought in about 20,000 of those influencers across the markets that you're in. Uh, right. And so, so if, if I'm in uh, in KL and I want to be an influencer, I can plug into the platform. At the other yeah. end, as you say, there are there are brands that that, that want to engage. Um, yeah. uh, what's the most important part of 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 the uh, of the business? Is it the analytics that you get from from that ecosystem? Is it the influencers? Is it the brands? Sure. So if you actually look at influencer marketing, I think it'd be useful for us really to look at the whole process of influencer marketing, right? And it's actually a three-stage process. The first stage process really is discovering or finding the right influencer, right? So if you're a coffee shop in Melbourne and you just open a new outlet, 
you would need to find and you would like to promote your your coffee shop how do you promote it today right do you advertise on facebook do you advertise in the newspapers obviously not right the most efficient way for smes to really promote themselves today is getting an influencer to visit their store and say good things of the the store the coffee on facebook or instagram does that make sense yes right so what we do is we enable the discovery this sme to discover the right influencer right so you'll be able to, for example, search in our platform. I want a 15 to 30 year old influencer in Melbourne that loves coffee, right? And a list of influencers will come up. You can look at the engagement rates. You can look at their follower count, and then you can select the right influencer, right? Now that, that's the discovery stage. Once you select the right influencer, the, influ the influencers, we, we have influencers in our platform that have already downloaded the app. So when they download the app, what happens is the influencer can then kind of choose, uh, can accept or disaccept the brands that actually have, have reached out to them, right? So right. that's the second step, really engagement. And then the influencer, once he posts, there's actually a whole workflow where he can communicate with the SME. Once he posts, he then also gets paid in the app that he can then transfer to his bank account, right? So that's the second step, which is really the engagement step. And the third step really is once the followers of this influencer actually walk, walk into the outlet. We actually have capability to track the likes, the engagement, and also soon to, soon as well, we have, a, we have a feature called the, the social wallet where the followers can walk into the, the, the coffee outlet and get a discount uh, because they're a follower of an influencer, right? Now, why would the coffee outlet give a discount? Is so that that enables tracking of actually how much sales that the influencer actually generated to the coffee outlet. Okay, so um, uh, that's a business uh, model that has been building out um, uh, across the, the, the region now for, for some years. What yeah. uh, features are you hoping to build in 2024? Sure, so actually the whole discovery component is a new feature. We've been doing the engagement component for quite some time. The whole discovery of finding the right influencer in a particular geolocation that likes coffee is a new feature that we're rolling out this year. Okay. As um, well as the tracking component, which is step three, right? Interestingly, um, uh, you're a calendar uh, yeah, a December balance date company. Um, and uh, uh, the year to December 2023, revenue was more or less the same as, uh, as yep. FY22. But the second yep. half was much better than the first half. What do you attribute yep. your uh, second half performance to? Well, so we invested a lot, a lot in our technology that enabled us to scale better. And so in the first half, there was a lot of investment into the new technology and that investment technology started to reap in the second half. And we expect that that investment to continue to the returns of the investment that enables us to scale to continue in the foreseeable future. Right. Um, now, uh, we talked about the three markets that you, you're in, uh, Singapore, um, uh, Malaysia and, uh, and Taiwan. You've got other plans to grow. Um, when do you think we'll be arriving in places like Indonesia, for example, or the Philippines or other other uh, countries that have got a fair bit of, um, of, of social media presence? Sure. So we constantly look at new regions that we can expand to. Some of the markets you mentioned, Indonesia, Philippines are markets that we're really looking into expanding. We have very strong strategy, a very clear strategy on how we intend to expand. We look at, for example, acquiring small agencies or mid-sized agencies in these markets, acquire them and roll out the, our technology so that they can bring on board the influencers that they have in those markets onto our platform, right? And then post that, we look at setting up, for example, an office in Singapore where all the regional budgets are for advertising and promotions is located and enable them, the regional brands really serve uh, the, the regional mar markets of Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and Philippines. If you put these four markets together, you've got a population of over 300 million people, right? Right. So this is the and, initial market that we say, and that's 10 to maybe 15 times the size of Australia, right? Right. Um, yeah. So, so uh, looking ahead over the next six months, uh, as well as some of these new features you're talking about, is there anything else we can uh, look forward to hearing from you? Yeah, so I think, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, the discovery is a big feature we're rolling out. The, uh, the, uh, the, 
the whole tracking of, of the of the followers that go into a particular SME or brand or purchases a product is something that we're looking at. The commerce component uh, is another aspect that we've been growing. One of our fastest growing aspects of our business, the live commerce business where, where people can actually sell or influencers can actually sell products on TikTok. That actually grew 50% last year, right? And we expect right. more brands to come on that platform. And, and with that, we expect that the business of that particular, um, the growth of that particular business to continue to grow at a very fast rate. Right. Um, example has no debt at the moment and about 3 million in cash. So um, uh, so you're more or less funded for the next stage of growth, given that you're, um, you're, you're profitable. Uh, yep. What can we expect uh, to see in terms of margins going forward? Um, uh, how, how well is the, is the cost base being managed to see an increase in gross margins, for example? Sure. So operating expense would be, would be stable. However, growth and operating expense and gross margins we expect to be stable. And with that, the, the, the net margins we expect to improve over time. Right. So uh, there's a fair bit of scalability built into this business now that yeah. the platform is, is more That's or less rolled right. out. Okay, That's so, right. we, we, That's right. so the shareholders have a lot to be excited about for 2024. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Right. Ganesh yeah. Kumabanga, uh, George uh, Shmiel, uh, thank you for uh, for tuning in this afternoon. Um, good luck for uh, 2024. And uh, and here's to uh, uh, strong uh, earnings in the interim uh, coming up in a few months' time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stuart. Thank you.